What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. So how's it going, Horror Research 30 fans? I'm here with Rachel today. And Rachel, how are you doing? Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Appreciate it. How are you doing? Out in that beautiful weather of California. You know, it's it's 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. I mean, what can I complain about? <laughs> I mean, the whole quarantine, you can technically complain about being, like, stuck inside, at least. Yeah, I mean, I thankfully I have a balcony here in this, uh, my building, and so I sit out there at, like, 5.30 as the sun's going down and have a cocktail. So I'm trying to imagine I'm on vacation or something, and that's why, like, I'm not working. <laughs> hey, hey, that's nothing wrong with that, getting drunk on the balconies. <laughs> I mean, it's, it could be worse, right? It can be. Can you yeah, and drunk? you're doing okay too, right? Oh, I'm good. Oh, yeah, I'm oh, good. Yeah. I'm good. I mean, like I was telling you before, I did about around 30 episodes more, probably a little more, which is great, especially Crazy. for a after. Workhouse. And, like, the funny thing is, <laughs> is I didn't have anything, like, scheduled or planned when this whole quarantine mm-hmm. thing first started, because I'm only thinking it's, like, two weeks. But, okay, let me see what I can get done in two weeks. And then, you know, the two weeks go by, and they add another two weeks, and they just keep adding up. So, yeah, I just kept freaking recording. Had I known from, like, the day, it was a Tuesday, I believe, where they were, like, you're going to be on for at least two weeks. Had I known that day that I would have been gone this long, I think I would have tried to schedule things sooner and just threw out. Yeah. I'm doing it now, so. But you're making it happen, so that's good. <laughs> and it's fun. It is fun. I will not lie to you about that. It's just, yeah. it's like I was telling you a few minutes ago, it's just like just going to the store, just not to go buy something, but just to walk around or walk around like in a mall just to get out of your freaking house. Yeah. Without having to go for a walk like outside, especially if it's cold out. Well, yeah. if it's cold out. <laughs> what What's cold? I don't know. Um... What's this cold thing you're referring to? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what you guys consider cold. Like, oh, no, years. I'm a big wimp. I, if it's, like, below 70. Oh, I see. But, but that's also because I'm cold-blooded, I think. <laughs> I mean, you are over, like I said, you're over in the nice California weather. And it's funny. Real quick, one of my brothers moved to Florida a few years ago. And he came up to visit one October. And he was he was in a like a winter coat and everything. He was cold. Oh, yeah. I was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "It's not you're, you got you went moved to Florida and got soft. You lived here your whole <laughs> life." It was like fifty degrees. It was like a nice day for us because it was fine. Like it was like the warmest day of the week. Oh yeah. And he came up, and that was nice to us at the time because once it's like thirty, you know, twenty thirty degrees every day, and then it goes up to fifty. Like, oh wow, this is it's not it's t-shirt weather. Warm, Almost, right? Yeah, and he's over here shivering. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> that would be me, unfortunately. <laughs> I was born in Colorado, actually, and, and we lived there for a while, and I skied and stuff, and then we moved to California, and I just cannot handle the cold now. It, it is, I have to layer up so much if there's snow, and wear, like, three pairs of pants, and 
I became soft too. <laughs> you don't miss the snow, I take it. You know, I, I think it's fun for like a vacation, but I have to be properly attired for it. I hear you. I, hear you. I, don't, even think, <laughs> I don't even think it's fun for a vacation, honestly. For me, I mean, I live it. That's true. When it comes, but I don't think, I don't think, I'm not going to say I would never move out of New York State. I don't think I would, but if I were to, Snow is not one of the things I would miss. Like some people, oh, I miss the winter. Like, bullshit, come over here and shovel for me. <laughs> <laughs> what they miss maybe is like the changing of the seasons. Like we don't have that in LA. And I think that that is a bummer. It just kind of feels like every day is the same. And there's not a shift in the season, sure, but not in like energy either. Like Christmas where it's like hot out is odd to me. Okay. Like, I want it to be cool for Christmas, you I know? Get what you're and yeah. I, I'll admit, snow looks nice. I just wish it would snow just, like, say, just on the lawn. Yeah, yeah. Then, like, just in the backyard, because then you don't have to shovel anything. You can right. still go back and forth. Okay. To like, back, back in the day, you wanted to have the snowstorms because of school, you know, school True. being canceled. But now, as an adult, it has to be a really bad storm for them to cancel, like, the state. So I'm like, I, I got to drive out in this crap either way. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make it you know, I wonder if, if they're going to cancel school for snow days anymore now that they all figured out that you could Zoom. That would be interesting. That would be real interesting, honestly. I guess you'll have to see what happens next winter. Yeah. I guess we got to see what happens when they go back. Because I know they're not going back the rest of the school year here. Yeah. Because here, it's, school's done in mid-June, mid-June or end of June. Yeah, that's how it is in L.A. too. But um, we're on lockdown till. So mid-may yeah us too and that's just till now and i'm sure it'll go further so it'd be stupid Uh, i bet it'll be like june 1st for us you think so yeah i i'm thinking june i'm not sure when because i know they're i know here they want to open it up slowly i guess cuomo wants to do certain businesses first and see how that goes so i'd probably be going back to work sometime in june which i'm not meaning but it's just (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so boring but at the same time right. i don't want to get sick or get anybody else sick because yeah it. It, it's boring but it's it's a small price to pay for uh trying oh. to help everybody out you know oh yeah because if it was the other way around, you're, you're doing stuff to occupy your time which is great oh i'm so happy that that's the good thing about it like I, like for people if you're a podcaster if you just have some sort of arts and crafts thing you do a project you want to get done at home, this is the perfect time to do any of that stuff, to work on cert- yeah. some sort of craft that you can do either by yourself or with your household. Totally. So I guess we can get into you more, though. So what got you into acting? Is it something you always wanted to do? or? Um, you know, not initially. When I was really young, I wanted to be a writer, and I did a lot of writing. I wrote several books, you know, books for a kid, but they were books. Um... And then high school rolled around and my community uh, theater was doing auditions for Anna Green Gables. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And so then I got cast in it and I was like, this is fun. And so it was all uphill, downhill from there. (laughs) That's awesome. I was addicted. And so I went to school. uh, I went to Chapman University for my undergrad and then moved to L.A. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. And now I'm doing lots of horror movies because that, that's just what I fell into. That's all. I, I find that awesome. <laughs> I know this is a horror podcast, so I'm just like, this is just great. I know. It's your gravy, right? <laughs> now, is it a genre that you've always been into as far as a fan of? or? No, actually. I um, was not allowed to watch horror movies when I was growing up. So I've been kind of discovering horror much more recently like I just watched the Scream movies in the last year Mm -hmm. um and I had those were super fun like so I'm kind of discovering horror now as an adult and what I love about horror is the fans like the community around horror actors and horror films like you guys love your genre and that is so cool because you're just so passionate about it and you're down to watch anything and you're down to like find the silver lining of every project like I think that's really beautiful Uh, that's awesome that you say that and it's cool it's really cool you say that because you're just now getting into horror and you notice that already because I mentioned that a lot on the show like the horror community how 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 tight it is and then with the horror fans how we we will literally watch any horror 
there's been plenty of times where people are like, Aaron, this is the worst horror movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I have to watch it. And I'm just like, I want to see it. I don't, I, I don't know why we do it. I think it's one of those things where it's like, is it really, can it really be that bad? Sometimes right. it is. Sometimes it's worse and sometimes it's not that bad. Yeah. I want to watch it. And I, I feel that's the only genre that works. If somebody says, you know, there's a, here's a horrible comedy. Oops. Here's a horrible comedy movie. I really don't feel like I'm going to go and watch because comedy you look at to laugh. Horror, okay. I want just to see something crazy. Totally. And it's just out like again, horror is it's it can go in any any direction for one. And you're gonna watch it. And like I said, with the horror with the horrible movies, I've watched plenty of them. <laughs> and I don't regret it. And my biggest reason why I say I don't regret watching the ones that I did not like at all is because if I regret those or say I can erase them from my memory, then I'm gonna yeah. watch them again <laughs> and get mad all over again. So it's like, I'm like oh yeah, this one. <laughs> it's like, oh man. And yeah. But I do try to find, especially with this platform, I do try to find a silver lining in movies. It's hard. So I try to make it funny. Like there was a movie, um, Tales from the Hood Part 2. Hated it. But oh, yeah. I had a cool jacket in one of the stories. So I said that. Like I'll mention something oh, cool. small or funny like that. And my brother, I was telling you about that, made this awesome thing. Oh, for yeah. Me. Well, he that made is- it. He didn't make it for me, but he sent it to me. That thing is but, cool. But that. He's the one who was saying, like, when you do your show, he's like, I enjoy your show, but when you do your show, try, even if there's a movie you hate, try to say something positive about it because it is someone's art. So I do try, but I try to make it funny at the very least because I, <laughs> I can't connect with every single horror movie. I just can't. Yeah, nor should you, I think. Like, it makes sense why, you know, there are certain things you like more than other things, but maybe someone else did connect with that one, you know? Okay. Yeah. But what's so cool is you guys are, are down to be so positive. And you recognize, like, the artistry, like, how so that was someone's blood, sweat, and tears, even if it wasn't maybe that great in the end. Like, you could still respect the fact that they finished it and that they set out to make something. Like, I think that's really cool that you guys recognize that. I, oh, that, that I do recognize, but I will still say, like, this movie is just... <laughs> well, like, what I'll do now, I, I'll tell people... I'll never tell people not to watch a movie. I recommend mm-hmm. a ton of movies, but if it's a movie I don't like, I'll say, if you watch this, do not blame me for watching this. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> That's you know, funny. I don't want to watch it again. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's fun, though. I really do enjoy it, and I love meeting new people, meeting other horror fans, or mm-hmm. as yourself, getting someone that's just getting into horror. Just diving into it, yeah. Yes. So I, I'm going to have to find some movies for you to check out. Yes, I, I want to – maybe your top three, like, okay. all time – that's, that's then, tough. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I sh- it, should, it should be phrased like, for someone who's new to horror, for someone what three horror? movies that's a should question. I watch? And like, granted, I'm not a big like torture porn person. That's just not my thing. Like, so I wouldn't watch the Saw movies, for example. I, okay. I know what, like the premise of those. So I, I don't want that type of thing. But I do like more thrillers, I guess, like the Insidious films, and I really enjoyed Scream. I like the, the, the fun aspect of that. I loved Aliens, which I consider like a horror thriller. Yeah. You know, you, that kind of stuff. Um, the Conjuring movie? The Conjuring movies? Conjuring 1 and 2? I have not seen the second one. I have seen the first one. But I'm, is that the same world as Insidious? That is, right? I don't think so. No, I think it's two different universes. Okay, so so maybe I'm maybe Conjuring, I haven't seen that then. Conjuring is with um, Annabelle and with oh, what's the other one called? The Nun. Oh, okay, I, I don't think I have seen that. Okay, so Conjuring one and two that you're recommending that? Yeah, Conjuring one and two, those are really good. Okay, great. Sinister, I would say watch those. It's not like the torture porn. It's crazy. Okay. It, it is violent and gory. But it's, those are like, as far as the movies that came out in the later 2000s, I would say Sinister 1 and 2 and The Conjuring 1 and 2 are okay. good ones. You said you watched Insidious already, which is another good one. So you're, are you more into like paranormal, you think? Or do you not like like a... Paranormal. Um, I'm like a big sci-fi person. So, you know, I feel like I like that it feels otherworldly, maybe. Maybe that I'm seeing like some similarities there. Um, I got one. Watch... Um, John Carpenter's The Thing from sometime, oh, what is it, 80-something, I forgot. But that oh, was, yeah, I've heard of this, but I haven't seen it. That was okay. a really good movie. Okay. And you can even watch the one from the 2000s, the remake of it. Yeah, did you like the remake of it? I loved it, because okay. they, they do connect, which I think is great. 
Oh. So I'll watch them both. Okay. And if I think of some more, I'll definitely let you know. Yeah, shoot me an email if you yeah. if you do. I can go all day about horror. Like, do you, <laughs> all right, I'll give you an app to check out. Do you have an app? It's called Tubi. Yes, uh, actually, I mean, Death Day is on Tubi, which is funny. Um, that's how I heard of it. I hadn't heard of it before. And that that app has a ton. Just go through there, look through. The okay. Room. There's a ton of horror movies through there that. Some I've never even heard of and watched, and I've, I've been watching them here and there when I can. And There's so much horror content, too. Like, do you feel like you're able to watch everything? Like, you stay on top of this, the new movies that are coming out and all that? Oh, no. <laughs> Definitely not. There's just too many of them. There's, there's so many. And then, like, with me, I remember I was telling you how, like, if somebody tells me, like, Aaron, this movie was horrible, watch it, and I'll watch it. <laughs> right. I'm the complete opposite. If someone's like, this is the best horror movie I've ever seen. I'll take longer to watch something like that than I will if somebody says it's horrible. And I think it's because when somebody tells you it's bad, you have low expectations already for it. So like, it can't be as bad as they're saying. Yeah. That. But when someone says it's like the best movie they've ever seen in their life, in your mind, you're like, okay, this movie is probably going to disappoint you. You put it in there, you watch it. Like it's been built up too much for you, yes. potentially. Yeah. And it, could, it could really be a really good movie, but you're going in there with those high expectations. So you're just like... Mm -hmm. Oh, this movie was okay. It wasn't. All, maybe you got to watch it two or three times to really enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, another movie um, that just came to mind: Hereditary. My brother had. I finally. He's been telling me to watch that for over a year. I finally watched it. <laughs> a month ago. I don't know. I I think that movie's gonna freak me out. It's. I mean, I've heard some. I, I mean, I maybe. I just the trailer gave me the heebie-jeebies, but. I know that there's some really interesting like storytelling going on in that, and the filmmaker is so interesting. I guess it's a good word, and I know he's he's very good at what he's what he's trying to accomplish. Like he really does create feeling in, in the audience. Mm -hmm. But like just because, and I only know that why well, I, I watched his short. I don't know if you've seen. You should check if you're a big fan of him. I can't think of his name. Ari is that his name? Um, he did a short at AFI. Mm -hmm. before hereditary and it is out of this world it is crazy it is horror it is psychologically like i'm i'm like was like emotionally scarred after watching it i think that's why i'm nervous about watching hereditary because i'm like i'm not gonna have that same experience i can't remember the name of his short but if you um look up his name on, on imdb it's the short that i think that he went to sundance with and that's why he got this movie deal to do hereditary i'll have to look into that yeah, because it is, it is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a family, and it's family, you know, that goes, it's just weird family dynamics, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy, man. Crazy, okay. Another one <laughs> I do is um, one more that's in the top right now. Another one recommended from my brother was uh, A Quiet Place. Yes, I need to watch A Quiet Place. I think, I think that one's on Prime. Yeah, I think um, I wanted to watch that because the sequel was coming out and I heard such good things about that. There's just so many good movies that have come out the last few years, it, especially horror. There's been a really great resurgence of horror. Which I'm so happy about. Mm -hmm. I just, the thing with horror though, which I feel like horror is still like the outcast, which I like in a sense because I don't want it to be overdone to where, you know, not that I don't want a bunch of movies to come out, but I don't want it to be overdone and. I guess over Hollywooded, if that's a word. Mm -hmm. I think you know what I mean, though. To where, yeah, to, yeah. To where they just water it down. I don't want them to water it down and ruin. To where they're just throwing a movie out there, just to throw it out there for us horror fans to go watch. I'm just like, yeah, right, I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. To the old stuff. That's what I'm afraid of with that, but because it, I feel like, like you're saying, it does have a resurgence. It's getting a little bit more popular. And it is getting more respected, I would say from like a critical standpoint, you know, with, with Get Out and Us and, and A Quiet Place. But I think you're right. It still does feel kind of like an outcast. I think it's not as respected as, you know, art house indie films, you know? I feel like it should be because I look at it because they're taking their time to, for these movies to try to scare you or just do mm -hmm. something crazy in these movies. And I feel like the acting chops even if it's not like, you know, the A-list actors and actresses, it's still the acting chops it takes. It's crazy because you go from watching a movie of somebody ripping somebody apart, let's say, to beating this person in person and they're giving you a hug. I'm like, this is, 
Yeah. This is because in a movie, like in a lot of horror movies, there's plenty of plenty of people who you end up hating in that movie. Yeah. You hate them in real life just because they were in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then right. when you meet them, it's a whole different. You're like, wow, you're the complete opposite of you're like different than I expected. <laughs> Which to me, to me, is plays up with really good acting, and it be, just because it's like. I really thought you were, because then you, I don't know, I guess when you're in your, in your mind watching a movie, you're like, this is how this person really is. And yeah, they're really not like that. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it, it makes sense that, that people assume actors are like their, their characters they play because you've been watching this person personify this character and like have all these traits and you, of course you're going to fall in love with the the men and women that you're like, attracted to because that you're being told to fall in love with them during oh, like yeah. the love story you know what i mean so and then you're told to hate them and everything then you're told to hate them right <laughs> which is that that's the easier part for me i think hating and like Nick, i don't hate this person but i don't like nicholas cage at all I just, okay. his acting and i wish he would if like he wouldn't bother me so much if he stayed away from horror movies because i have friends that know how i feel they know how i feel about nicholas cage and as all friends are that's the movies they're going to want to review. So right. a horror movie with him in it. Hey, Aaron, let's do it. I'm like, oh my God. Not, not only do I have to watch this, now I have to talk. Yeah. To <laughs> so yeah, that's like one actor I cannot, I just, I, he needs to either retire or just stay away from horror. <laughs> and I think he's doing like another horror movie. ending up seeing him and maybe, well, you know, it's probably lower budget horror stuff. And maybe he's kind of, phoning it in sounds harsh, but like, I think he was a good actor and I think he's just working maybe too much to keep the quality of his work See, as high as it was. Like, I feel he's the same person in like every single movie. I feel like he's just mm. playing the same role because he, he always makes a stupid face and he always yells in every movie and just acts crazy. That's like Nicolas Cage. His, you go through his IMDb, it just says acts crazy every movie. Acts crazy. <laughs> And he could be a, he could be one of the nicest people in the world. Like I said, I don't hate him as a person. Just, right, yeah. I don't I don't like his movies. I just stay out of my horror genre at the very. You're <laughs> not gonna retire, and we can be at peace. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh man, I don't want to get a Nicolas Cage rant anymore. I do it too much on this. <laughs> <laughs> your your listeners understand your point of view, and that's okay. That's your you know. Oh, yeah, that's your box here. We all have them. We all have them. Exactly. But, um, so how is it acting? Like, do you, I've, obviously I'm guessing you really enjoy it, but is it like, as far as playing like one of these horror movies, is it like a, do you have to put yourself in like a certain, certain mindset? Mm, I mean, I think that acting regardless of genre is pretty much the same in the sense, like I really have to believe the circumstances I'm in. It's mm -hmm. just, I think with horror sometimes the circumstances are so outlandish that maybe like some people just struggle with believing those circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy being covered in blood. Like it, I think it feels fun and, and like I'm playing and I think that I'm able to really fall into the world because of that. Like I'm able to believe the weird circumstances because I've got these practical effects on me that help me believe that, if that makes sense. Or I'm being chased by someone and that feels like the adrenaline, you know, is, yeah. is in there. Or I'm learning how to do a fight sequence so that I can have this, this parlay with someone. That's fun to me. And that helps me get into these movies, into these characters. See, that's awesome right there. That's really, and uh, the blood right there. I was like, I have to put this up. That was, and the one down here. Oh, damn, I still get used to Oh yeah, there. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, that's some blood. That one above your shoulder there where it's like head to toe, mm -hmm. that was an exterior shot. And um, it was, I think, four in the morning when we shot this scene. And it was so cold because the blood is on my skin and there was a breeze. And it just was like, it just dropped my temperature down. It was like I had, if you can imagine, if your whole body was covered in like a thick layer of lotion. Mm -hmm. And then the, the wind came through. It would just, ooh, I got so cold during the scene. <laughs> but the shot looks great. Like, I look like... The shot looks awesome. You can barely see my face, like, my eyeballs. It's so yeah. bloody. The shot looks awesome. Now, how, do, how does they go about doing that? Is it something that they just, like, dump on you, or...? This was a bucket. Oh. Um, that was... And it was... Uh, the... the 
I, I guess it's slightly spoilery, but I'll say someone explodes and um, the blood was, you know, I was nearby. So the blood was shot on me via a bug. Nice. Um, and then the one in the corner where you see more of like the blue shirt, that nice. was a, a gun, uh, like a hose gun type situation. Okay. So he, the VFX guy, I mean, the uh, special effects guy was like squirting this gun at me. And so I was getting blood that way. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. That's cool, though. I, don't, I always want to know just how they do the blood in certain movies and certain scenes because it looks so – a lot of them do look really good. Like, these two look good from what I can see from the pictures. And I Yeah, like I think it. I'd actually really like Death Day because it's an interesting um, premise. It uh, was originally called The Campus, mm-hmm. and we shot it before Happy Death Day. Ah. Uh. But like a month before or something. And so we didn't know that there was a movie that was going to, and they, they're very similar like premises, even though they're totally different in the execution. Mm-hmm. But like I die over and over again. And then every time I wake up, I'm in a different horror trope. So I wake up and I'm in suddenly being chased by zombies or I wake up and there's a monster or I wake up and my it's body horror and my body just slowly deteriorates until I die. So, you know, it is a different premise than Happy Death Day. It's just funny that, like, they came out kind of around the same time. And then the distributor changed the name of this to Death Day, I think, to try to acknowledge, like, maybe some people who liked Happy Death Day would want to watch Death Day. That's, that's actually really smart marketing, though, because... For sure. I want to watch... I have this on my wish list on, wish list on Amazon Prime, to, or watch list, sorry. And when I go, you know, I was looking this up, what pops up with it? Happy Death Day. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, funny, right? it's smart. It's smart yeah. because then people will see that, see this. And, and I'm blonde and I kind of look like what's her name from Happy Death Day. So like you can kind of think like, oh, is this a sequel or something? Like you or, might. Yeah. You, might you could, you could think it's a, are they connected, but they're not. Connected. Yeah, but they're not. <laughs> no, that's cool though. Did you have a, do you have a favorite movie you've done so far? Our favorite mm. project, or not necessarily. Oh, I, I, I fall in love with my projects. I, 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 I kind of have to. Like, I have to put a lot of bandwidth into my work because it does take over mm-hmm. time, and it takes over my mind, and it takes over like my life essentially. Um, I really liked In Bed with a Killer, this Lifetime movie, just because I was still able to have a lot of the horror, fun horror elements. Like I do get killed in that, Mm -hmm. but um, it was more quirky. I was playing like this quirky barista. So it was just like a nice light energy on set because we're all like having more of a good time. While Death Day, I'm like running from my life and screaming and like crying. So it's just a heavier experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough question. They're like my babies. You're asking me to to tell you which one is my favorite baby. Hey, every parent has a favorite child, though. That's true. Uh, my mother has three kids, and I'm the third favorite. So, <laughs> well, I'm at least okay with you're okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I can live with it. Yeah, yeah. They're all they were all fun in different ways, but I, I think in bed with a killer it was just a really fun, and it was my first time like having a really big meaty role on television. Okay. It, it was on Lifetime, so I feel like I have a lot of really fond memories around that too. Well, that's good though. Life, lifetime, I, I'm gonna have to check that out because I'm one of those people, one of those guys who does enjoy some Lifetime here and there. They have yeah, some, this, this was fun. They're always crazy ass scenarios though. It's they like, are every single time. I'm like, what the hell is going on in these suburb neighborhoods? Exactly. It's so true. Like, what? Who comes up with this stuff? And they're all very similar in in many ways, but. That's why they're kind of like fun. There's like these um, lifetime drinking games. So like when the woman goes from the big city to the small town, like you take a shot or whatever. And it, it, all the movies kind of follow this similar formula and it's enjoyable. It, no, it really is. Like I've, <laughs> there, there would be times where I'd go to my father's house or me and my father would be hanging out and my, you know, my wife will come over or whatever and we're watching Lifetime. She just comes in. So like, did you guys put this on? Because I was going to be like, no, we <laughs> this all day. You're like, sure. It was, it's just because you were coming in. <laughs> but there's really, like, a lot of times, I haven't watched it in a little while, but there's a lot of good movies on there. 
and I they're making movies you know right and left they're making so much content for that network so and it's great content it's really yeah. good content very even fun. though like you're saying the stories are very similar premises but they're still you you watch every single one like I can't believe this just happened like I just, yeah you're still surprised by it <laughs> yeah it's so true <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna have to check that out in bed with a killer yeah I think that might also be on Amazon oh, okay, if good. you don't have lifetime good good now um what about this damn it. this movie here oh human zoo uh so human zoo is coming out on may 5th okay um to itunes i don't know if it's coming onto amazon uh we just heard about the release like a week ago mm -hmm. and they wanted it to be a premiere and like a big to do and then you know lockdown happened and so they're trying to do um i think we're gonna do like a casting crew zoom call like on may 5th i think to kind of try to celebrate a, a little bit and like get the idea of like a premiere mm -hmm. um the premise of human zoo it was originally called um solitary confinement and it's about a game show a reality game show where um contestants are trying to stay in solitary the longest and whoever stays the longest gets a million dollars. But there's, I mean, it says escape is not an option. I'm like, how much can I give away? It's, it's so, but we, the, the contestants realize that they're not allowed to leave solitary. Okay. So it, it's kind of like, it's a, it's just about people going crazy. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And then is this one over here? Okay, hang on. Is this one over here from Death Day, right? The Blood? Yeah. Yeah. Because you sent, I remember you sent me the pictures, but then when I saved them, made, I forgot what was with oh, what. Oh, yeah, yeah. Besides yeah, so the titles. These three are, are uh, Death Day. These three in the left side of my screen. I'm not sure if it'll look like that. And okay. then um, I think the little bit of After Party is right behind your yeah, arm the here. Black the and black and white one. That's like directly behind me. Now, what was that one about? I mean, as far as the little bit of what you can say. Uh, the after party? Yeah. So that um, is a black and white film noir thriller. Um, it's a short. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. Oh, nice. I, I pitch it as Twilight Zone meets The Shining. And it's essentially like about this social media diva who goes to a bar for one last drink and then ends up meeting people from her past, other women from her past. And she realizes that this bar is like a sinister place. Mm. Um, that has been on the festival circuit uh, for two years. We just played most recently at Golden State Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And um, I helped produce that as well. Oh, that's, that's really cool. So now how is it doing that? The producing would you rather produce or act i definitely would rather act um i just started producing because i wanted to start telling stories i wanted to see mm -hmm. and i wanted to be in and so i enjoy producing a lot i'm a, a you know organized detail-oriented person and i think that producing is a lot of like logistical stuff it's a very like cerebral thing of of putting this puzzle together of how to make a movie that and, and not break the bank and make everyone happy and make sure the work is good and make sure the script, like all of those things have to come together. Mm -hmm. And I found that I was, I was good at that. And I enjoyed doing that. If, if I'm involved in the project as an actor, um, I'm not a producer yet in projects that I'm not acting in. Um, I might do that more as, as you know, my career progresses, but I just haven't de uh, delved into that quite yet. Okay. But you so said you'd rather act or you have more fun acting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Some I just asked John that same thing yesterday, John Moody, and he said he likes both about the same. Some it's interesting because a lot I've asked others. Some rather be behind the camera producing or directing, mm -hmm. and others rather be right in front of it, which is cool either way, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I get to tell stories, regardless of how I do that. I just mm -hmm. enjoy acting. Is like a it's like a drug. It's so cool to fall into this mind of a different person and then try to find their humanity and tell the world about it, about it. Like, that's cool to me. 
yeah, that's now, how do you, I, I kind of asked a similar question a little while ago, but how do you get into that mindset? Like I know with some people I've asked, they have to like, some people have to like literally be alone to get into like a crazy mindset for certain films. Some people can just, it's like a switch. I can turn on and off whenever, but others really have to like, just be alone mm-hmm. and kind of just get themselves in like a dark mood, so to speak for, for something like for a role, like one of these, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So how does that for you? For me, you know, if it is something like horror or, or a thriller or something that is more sinister, I do like to have at least, you know, a moment before we go with the take, Mm -hmm. but like most of the time on set, you know, like for death day, like, we're shooting overnights, we're all exhausted. A lot of it is technical. So like I have all this weird stuff on my face because they're all, you know, special effects. And so it almost is just about like having a good time and then realizing I can amp into the the characteristics, like I amp into the situation pretty quickly because I've got these things on my face. Mm For something like a romantic comedy or something that's more like fun, I, I just would just keep staying fun. Like I'll just keep bantering in between takes. Like that keeps my energy in that place. Okay. That but if sense. it's a more emotional scene, I, I do like to take that moment to settle into that mindset. But I don't need, I don't care if people talk to me, you know, uh, I think there's certain like safety reasons why people need to be talked to, you know? So I'd rather someone be like, um, just so you know, this is happening in the next scene rather than them feeling nervous, like walking on eggshells to let me know of information. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Like, oh man, I don't want to go talk to her. Yeah. Of course she hit me. She yelled at me last time. <laughs> but no, I get it. But it's just, it's, it's interesting how different people as far when the acting, when it comes to acting, how they get into their roles or to their mindsets of, yeah, like, a, like a, for a sinister role, I'll say versus... Again, some have to be alone, just have to get themselves hyped up. Some can just, some can literally just be chilling, whatever, doing whatever they do on a normal basis and get right into it, which. And turn around and stab somebody, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just funny, like, there's a, there's an act, a horror actor, Kane, Kane Hodder. He played in Friday the 13th films, mm. 7 through X, 7 through 10. And I was, I read his book, I listened to his auto, I watched his autobiography. I listened to his book, I should say. And he was saying, like, what he would do is when he would get in the role of Jason, he would dress up as Jason and stay away from the cast. And, like, before he's coming on scene, he'd be banging and th- just yelling and banging and all this other stuff. But get, it would get him real hyped up because Jason's a really violent character. Get him hyped up for the Gosh. role, and then he'd go and do the scene. But he said he would do it like that, too, because for some of the people, they didn't see him in costume at all. Like, he'll stay away from me, he won't talk to me, I don't see him in costume. So when they first see him, and you do get, like, that kind of that real scare factor, which I think is right. awesome. It's, oh man, I think it's great. I bet that would be so cool, like for him to kind of reveal himself to the rest of the cast. Like that's creepy. Yeah, it is, and it's. I think it's so awesome though. Like that's just I would, I would probably pass out just from being so excited about it because that's my, <laughs> that's my favorite franchise, and he's like my favorite horror icon too. So it's. Oh yeah. Awesome. Have you ever done any conventions, like horror conventions? Uh, I haven't yet. Um. I've done like festivals, film okay. festivals, and then there was a, a we played the after party played at um, a comic con, not like San Diego comic con, but at this mm-hmm. traveling comic con. So I did go um, to the one that was in San Francisco. Um, but I, you know, I, I think it'd be fun to do some horror conventions, like as especially as I'm getting more horror uh, credits and people are like seeing my work. I think that it'd be fun to connect with people in that way and see other actors and other filmmakers and fans. I think that'd be really fun. Oh, I, I'm telling you firsthand, you will enjoy it because the energy from a comic con and a horror convention is so freaking different. It's like, oh, yeah? and not even, not even in a bad way, like with comic cons, I've been to a few smaller ones around here. I enjoyed them, but I feel with a comic con, not everybody wants to be there as far mm-hmm. as the fans. Like it's somebody's boyfriend or somebody's girlfriend or somebody's or the kids yeah. that are really into that genre. Yeah. So they're going, you know, you're going to support your significant other or your children. Right. And then with the horror genre, men, women, children, I feel like everybody wants to be there. Everybody's really a fan of that genre. 
so again, they're both really welcoming. Don't get me wrong on that, but it's just kind of a different energy. And you, yeah. can, you feel it like as soon as you walk into the building and it's just, it's amazing. And then oh, the way cool. the fans are, the way the celebrities are, everybody's like real nice to each other. Everybody's real welcoming and real. It's just, I've had some of my best times at these cons. This past, one I went to in, this past October, did the VIP for the very first time had the best time of my life at that oh yeah that's so Perfect cool yeah it was and just you probably made some good friends and stuff through that i imagine oh yeah i've met a lot of people through them and that's actually how i got some interviews and just some people coming on was through right cons. and like with the vip the first night it was a friday night they, that was like an open open bar vip for about two hours with whoever bought the vip ticket and then with the celebrities which was cool that was mainly the reason why I did it because VIP, you can get in the lines. I think you can come in like an hour early, get in the lines first and all that good stuff. Oh, cool. But I also brought my podcast, so we were also media. So we have to be in there early anyways to yeah. set up. So the, the whole VIP thing didn't really matter to us. Right. It was more, I mean, as far as getting in lines, I don't care about getting in line first. But it was more about just doing the party part of it because you, you get to talk to celebrities when they're relaxed, having a couple yeah. of drinks, they're not behind the tables. And it's just such, it's it's one of those experiences where I feel if you're a celebrity guest or a fan and you can afford it, I highly recommend it. I highly highly if you drink or not, I still highly recommend yeah. it. The atmosphere is so amazing. Yeah, it sounds like it's just really good energy. Like like people just love being there. Like people love sharing the fact that they're all fans of horror. Like that sounds really electric. Oh, it's. It's it's crazy. Like, <laughs> I mean, I wonder how long. Like, you know, when are they going to have cons again? It's oh, going to be a very interesting thing. It's very yes. You're so right. Like that. That's one thing I've been thinking about. I'm like, I can't wait to go to a con, but I'm like, when is it going to happen? And right. how much? How is it going to change? Because <clears throat> then, like now, or sorry, then you know, so the celebrities you can shake their hand, you can give them hugs, and all this other stuff. And is that going to change now because of this pandemic? Are they going to start? I'd seen a con a couple weeks ago. They did one like online. Oh, cool. So it was like similar to this, I believe. Is it going to be like that? Right. It could be good sometimes, but you're not getting that personal, you know, you're not getting yeah. that personal feeling. It's, it's disconnected. It things. Yeah. I, I, mean, I think that once everybody, hopefully, once everyone gets vaccinated, we can go more more close to a similar you know world that we had before i hope so because that's but they got to have a really effective vaccine in order for that to happen something <laughs> yeah something. but it's it's like for the cons it's one of those things where like that's the one experience you don't really want to change at all mm. the only thing i want to change from cons is people wearing deodorant because i feel if you can afford to get into the con which costs at a minimum yeah. about let's say 50 20, 20 to twenty five dollars. You can afford a five dollar stick of deodorant. This, right. And this isn't even like shots at people that I know. This is just shots at everybody that just goes there and decides not to do that. Just remember your right deodorant. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'll even say what cons can start doing: charge an extra five bucks and hand everybody that comes to that con a stick of deodorant. Right. If they need it or not, just here you go. There you go. <laughs> a sponsored deodorant. Someone like Boom. needs to sponsor the con. <laughs> Horror conventions, comic cons, all those type because for some yeah. reason, and you know, that's funny. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, like I don't want the con experience to change because it's it's just one of those things where I feel at everything in this world that's normal that could be changed that should be changed. That's one thing that I feel does not need to change because at yeah. horror conventions, people don't care about your race, your gender, your sexual orientation anything your age nothing they just go there and have a good time and talk horror yeah. and that's it and one i wish the rest of the world could be like that but yeah. that's and it's it's like a good getaway too that's another good thing about these cons like even though you're there with thousands of people but it's still right. a good getaway from the real world for if you're there for the weekend or however you know for those few hours if you're there for the weekend or just for a day you're with your time. people you're, i think you hit the nail on the head but like not feeling nervous about being accepted or mm -hmm. you know being teased or whatever like you can just relax and have a good time and know that no one's judging you like that's important we need to have those those places for people I, I do hope that that does not go to the wayside and then another great thing about horror nowadays i'll say more so and then cons in general is 
you're starting to see a lot more women, like women strong lead roles with women and more minorities with strong lead, mm-hmm. lead roles. We're not just like the ones that are getting killed in two yeah. seconds. Yeah. You know, it, I know it happens, but still I'm like, okay, you got to come on now. My black right. things would kick in here. I'm going to run. I'm not going to stay in here for four hours. Right. <laughs> I'm leaving. As soon as I hear something crazy happen there, I'm not even going to go. On yeah. out of here. But, <laughs> but no, all joking aside though, like all that stuff, it's cool to see more minorities. And like, when I go to these cons, I'm just like, holy shit, there's other black people here. This is cool. That's awesome. And it's awesome. Or, you know, going there with my wife and my brother, you know, there's, there's women there and there's children there too, which I think is awesome. And these people like dress their kids up as certain yeah. things. And Cute. what I like about that, as far as when I see younger children getting into horror is it reminds me of my childhood. Cause I have, I've been in the horror since I was between five and seven years old. Mm. And you don't really see that too often now as far as kids really in the horror movies, like how I was growing up. I know you said you're just getting into it. Yeah. And I understand you said your parents didn't let you and you behaved and listened, which is good because you should obey your parents. But me, <laughs> <laughs> I would watch it like with my older sibling, my older sibling and my older cousins, because, you know, back when video stores were out, you go rent a movie or whatever. And that's something yeah. that, that's a genre we would always get. So where I was old enough to where I can get them, where I was allowed to get them. But I'd watch it with them, and the rule was don't wake up mom or don't wake up aunt so-and-so when we're watching these movies, and I never did. And now yeah. I'm 34 now, and I'm still watching them. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, it was meant to be for you to, to discover that. Like, it's part of who you are. I think you're a horror fan through and through, you know? And the crazy thing about it, too, which I'll say with most horror fans, probably all of them, is – We've all been to a point where we watch movies and it scared the hell out of us, but you go right back and not only finish that movie, watch that movie again and watch a bunch more. I don't know why. Cause this, this was more when I was a kid where it would scare me. Maybe it was the adrenaline. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just the cool, yeah. I have no, no clue what it was. Maybe part of it was because I knew I wasn't supposed to be watching it. That right. was a big part of it, but it was rebellious, you know, now it's just like, I just didn't, I, enjoy, I look at it more of an art in a sense now. Cause it's like, with the practical effects like you're saying with the blood and all that yeah. or with you know when they make like a head or tear somebody's body apart right. it takes so long to create that thing that you're going to destroy but you destroy it in like five minutes and to me that's just amazing because i'm like i watch like behind the scenes stuff cool. on things too, and i'm like wow it took you like, say it for a head that it has to explode it took you 24 hours to make this head or 30 hours to make this head and you destroyed it in two minutes. And now it's gone, but you got it on camera. Like, did we get it? Did we get it? Yeah, we got it. <laughs> that's the funny thing, because I talk to people who've done, like, practical effects and stuff, and that's the one thing they're saying. Like, the, our main thing is when we do this, we have to get the shot good, because if you only make that one, <laughs> then that's it. It's like, it has to be perfect. And I, yeah. I'm like, holy crap, because me, for one, I'm not that talented to make anything like that or, like, the figure my brother made. <laughs> Let alone see it get destroyed. I'm like, oh, it took me 40 hours to make right. this thing. I changed my mind. I don't want to destroy this. Never mind. I'm going to take this home now <laughs> and protect it. Yeah, but it's just, it's just the art of it, just the craft, yeah. which I think is just a beautiful thing with horror. Those makeup artists and those, you know, SFX artists that are building those bodies and body parts and masks and gross monster, like, that is incredible artistry. It really is. It, and, that, and you're, I mean, you're right. Like they, then it gets destroyed or it gets marred in some way, but it's immortalized on screen. Like that's just so cool. Yes. Yes. And another thing about us horror fans, and this is like, this I can say is across the board. We love practical effects way mm-hmm. more than the CGI stuff. I understand that it has to be used at times. I get it. I don't like it, but I do get yeah. it. I don't, well, I don't mind it here and there, but I feel like sometimes it can be overused and then yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't look as good in certain things. Sometimes it's used and it's used well, but then sometimes they just overdo it. I'm like, if you just did the little practical effects, right. it would make it look so much better. Just 10 times it's better. Like a, it could be a crutch, I think, for some people to do, you know, VFX versus practical effects just because it's easier. Mm-hmm. But like... You're right. It doesn't look as good. It, it's not as compelling. Like it almost, it, it's like, I think, you know, our eyes are trained to, to look at something and know it's false. Yeah. Because, you know, it's survival. Like that's how we're going to survive as a species. We, we figure out what's real and what's not, and we figure out what's going to attack us or what's not. And then same thing when you're watching a movie and it, and sometimes I can't even fully 
say why something looks weird. I'm like, that looks off. And I, maybe I don't know it's fake or like digital Mm -hmm. until after the fact, like when I see some behind the scenes, something or whatever, but I had an uncomfortability while watching it. And that was, should have been my first tip off. Like, actually this is not real. That's why my (laughs) eyes are confused. You know? No, I get it. I do get it. Now, does that have any effect on act on you acting as far as like, with a practical effect prop versus a CG, CG. I mean, definitely like, you know, uh, I I was grateful because the effects in Death Day are almost all practical. So I was able to have an interaction with that. But there were times when they, you know, like the, the, the monster suit wasn't done yet. So I had to just be like looking into the void and they were going to like show his coverage later or whatever and that's where it's it is more more difficult understandably but you know using you just got to really use your imagination at that point and and know like okay i'm being told what i'm seeing i'm gonna imagine these circumstances and then i can have my genuine reaction okay yeah i was i was that's something i always mean to ask actors and actresses and i always forget until <laughs> yeah. talking about cgi yeah yeah but I get, I mean, I, I kind of get it to an extent, smaller extent, smaller scale. Cause I, as you can see, I have this green screen behind me. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting more and more used to it. But I remember I was recording with my brother one day, we were doing candy man. I was going back to point at something, but I turned around and looked back. And I was like, <laughs> You're like, wait a second. It's not there. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, I was like, uh, I forgot it's the green screen. We were just, yeah. up. But I was like, you know, I, I told him, I like, you know what I'm trying to do, man. This is just yeah. it's back there. That's funny. But that's, yeah, that's, that's very interesting. You got to, so that makes you have to act, you're acting, you have to act, act up a little bit more than if it's a practical effect there, like really standing there versus the CGI thing. Like me looking at a blank green screen, pretty much. You got to mm-hmm. imagine it. Totally. And, you know, I haven't done this yet, but I, I'm sure you've seen like BTS of, of someone acting opposite, like a little ball with like the dots on it. Cause they're going to do a CGI creature. Mm-hmm. And so someone's just like having the scene with this very inanimate ball. But what, what's incredible is the actor does it. Like the actor fig- figures it out. And I mean, that's training. Like we're told to imagine stuff. Like that's the basis of acting. But like when we're auditioning, we have to create and imagine all these things too. Cause you're in a, a small room, you're reading op- opposite somebody who's, maybe not the same gender or age as the person you're supposed to be with in the scene, mm-hmm. but we're having to create all that for the audition. It's similar to that, I would say. Okay. Now how, that's another question I got for you. How is it auditioning? Like for you, do you get nervous for an audition or is it just like, I'm just going to go in here and whatever happens. happens? I'm nervous, but I'm not, I think sometimes nerves are good. Like it's like an, an adrenaline rush. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I am very much an advocate for being totally memorized. It just helps me feel more comfortable when I'm in the room. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's just like the nature. I mean, auditioning is going to shift because of this whole thing. Like, I think we're going to see a lot more taped auditions versus in person. But um, like this last year, I auditioned for something and I was given the, the sides at 6 p.m. And it was seven pages and I had to be uh, at the audition at 10 a.m. the next morning. Mm. So I was like cramming to memorize and memorize and understand what's going on and make choices. Like that's the kind of, you just got to be, that's, that, that's like the, the kind of level of playing field. Like you have to just be ready to memorize pages and pages of dialogue at a short amount of time. <laughs> that's, that's something right there. My memory is terrible. So. <laughs> But I guess then again, though, if it's something you really have a passion for, you'll find a way to figure yeah. out how to cram and remember things. Totally. And it takes practice, too. Like, as well, I have been auditioning more, I've gotten better at memorizing, um, which is cool. What, do, what was your first role? Um, my first film role, I guess, after I moved to L.A., because I did a few student films at Chapman, but... I did a, oh, what was the name of this book? I did a, this company was doing trailers for new release books. And it was a, uh, it was called Demon's Kiss. And I was a redheaded vampire. I had red hair um, 
like seven years ago. I've only been blonde for like seven years. Well, now I have purple hair, but anyway, um, I was a redhead back then. So I was this redheaded vampire character where it, it becomes a romance novel. So there was like, that was the first thing I booked. And it was this thing where I'm like, Kate, gnarling my teeth. And then all of a sudden I fall in love with a handsome man and then we make out and then and that was it. It was like 30 seconds of footage. <laughs> it was fun though. No, that's cool though. That's cool. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to do more book trailers because that seems like a cool way to like sell a book, like to visualize the that, scenes and the story, you know? That's that's inter- I've honestly never heard of a book trailer, but that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah. It made me want to read the book. How was the book though? I didn't I didn't read it. <laughs> it made me want to though. It made me want to read the book. Okay, yeah. that that counts. <laughs> that counts. I hope I hope that that doesn't go back to the author. <laughs> She has a copy, by the way. She just didn't get a chance to read it. But it's, we're quarantined now. She's going to read it soon. I, it is on my list. <laughs> for there you sure. go. So uh, you're saying auditioning will probably change now and be probably something oh, yeah. like Zoom? I think it's going to be like, so we were seeing self-tapes come out um, in the last couple of years. Like they're more frequent. And that's just where, like, that's why I painted this wall blue so that I have a a really nice backdrop for my auditions. Mm -hmm. So it's just me with my, a reader and, you know, doing the scene. And then I email the scene to the cast director. Um, That was happening in in more frequency. But now I think you're not going to see anybody go into an audition room. I don't think for this whole year. Maybe we'll see 2021 people go in. Um... But the interesting thing will be the callback where they want to see you again and they want to see what your chemistry is like with maybe your romantic co-lead or like a family dynamic. They want to see how people kind of fit together. Mm -hmm. That's going to, I think, happen on something like this, like Zoom. And I'm just curious how it's going to, how effective it's going to be. Like, Like you and I are having a conversation and we're able to kind of like vibe and chat. Mm-hmm. But it would be totally different if it was in person, right? And okay. and so, you know, how can you figure out who can be romantically ke- chemistry with whom via Zoom? Like, I, I'm just not sure. So I think there's going to be a little bit of wonkiness as they figure that out. Yeah, I, that, that does make a lot of sense, actually, because just from, I'll just say, for example, for me doing this podcast like this via Zoom versus the few times I, which I've recorded with my brother on zoom or Skype versus when he was here in person. Mm-hmm. And it's just a different, it's a different energy altogether. Yeah. Both are good energies, but just a different energy. Totally. And then with me and him, we feed off each other even more. So when we're mm-hmm. in person together and you know, our wife- energy goes back and forth and you're able to like laugh, like tonally tones make sense. And like the subtext text is maybe more prominent in person. You know, it's just, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's all different. I do and I do love the Zoom aspect of it though, just for the simple fact that I can connect with so many people around the world. And like with my brother now, he lives out in Colorado, so you know I can still connect with him through this. Yeah. And the funny thing about it is, like when I first started this podcast too, I didn't do video. I mean, I did Skype, but I didn't record the video. I didn't do that until I started using Zoom. Yeah. When, once this whole pandemic started, is when I started the, this. Yeah, and this works well for that. And it, I, I love it. But the the cool thing about it, or the funny thing about it, is like before when we used to record on Skype, going back and forth. Sometimes my brother would do something funny on camera, like try to show stuff off. But I'm like, they're not going to see. It. It's only in the audio. They're not going to see it. And now it's just, it's all like, full circle. Here, you know. <laughs> something. That's funny. I love, it. but it, it's just so it's so freaking fun. Like it really yeah. is. That's great. And, and like I said, I really do like meeting new people through this and just talking horror with people and just seeing people's chem- the chemistry I get with people and their energy. Like everybody has a different totally. energy. Which is it's just- fun to just chat too, like to be able to have a conversation with you and you're in New York. Like that's just crazy. I recorded with somebody in Australia about two, I put the episode out the other day, but about two or three weeks ago, I believe, which was just- oh, that's cool. Nuts. And it was me and him were trying to record each other for the past few months, like even way before this pandemic started. And I guess yeah. you know, that this helped. But oh, the, the time difference 
is crazy. I don't even remember. I don't, still don't know what the time difference is. Yeah, are they eight hours? No, I think they're more than that. I, it's either, I don't know if it's eight or nine or ten hours. Whatever it is, they're, I know they're ahead of us. They're ahead, because they're, they're living, to, they're in the future. They are. So they, they're living tomorrow, today. And they, we're leave, living today for their yesterday. Yep, they should be able to tell us what's going on then. They're yeah. Not, they're holding information. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like for, and I've done this before. So like for podcasts like that, I have to, I have to be the one to have the weird time, like say one or two o'clock in the morning. I have to be like, Oh like, yeah. Let me take a nap if I have to. Let me be, but it would be messed up. Like for me and you recording, like, all right, I need you to come out at such and such a time. And right. three, three o'clock in the morning for me, it's, you know, later in the day. Yeah. I'm all good. Well, I know we're only three hours apart, but I was like, no, I, I have to be the one that has to get that, that shitty time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's, that's nice of you to accommodate, you know? <laughs> well, because I look at, like, it's, it's, it is my show, yes, but I want them to come on here, and I want it to be as easy and as comfortable and as lax as possible for my guests. It's like when you have somebody over your house. Ha- well, the yeah. certain people that you have over your house, maybe not everybody, <laughs> that, you know, you yeah. want them to be kind of comfortable and cozy and just kind of kick back and relax. Then there's the ones that are just like, I can't wait for them to leave. So, you're, you know, you're throwing them signs, like, okay, well, yeah. looking at your watch, I'm going to bed soon. Oh, okay. You're like, well, I'm going to go to bed so that you can leave. That's what my parents would say sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed so that you can leave. <laughs> or I got to go. So I got to go to the store. I'll just I'll wait here. No, I won't be back. For oh, no. I, I gotta, please I'll, don't wait here. Yeah, I got to go to your house. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is such a. It's, you know what it is, too, about this thing? is it, it's a, I use it as a getaway, too, especially with this whole crap going on. Even though I, when I'm not recording, I'm not thinking about it, but it's still just a little getaway. Yeah. I almost feel like I'm in California. I'm getting warm now. I got the hoodie on. Yeah, see? <laughs> I can show you the sun. There's a blue sky. Just imagine this blue wall is the sky, and see? then you'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool picture behind you, by the way. Oh, yeah. Paris. Let's see. Ah, that's nice. Um, yeah, it's a pretty big picture. It's easy to take down and put back up, you know, for things like self tapes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, have you ever been out of the country as far as doing a movie? Uh, not for a movie. I've, I've traveled, you know, just on personal business, but um, I would love to shoot something in Europe. I love Europe. I love like art history and architecture. And I think that'd be so cool. That would um, be. One of these days, one yeah. of these days when we're allowed to travel again, I'm going to travel. Happen. It'll definitely happen. It might be a year or two out, but it yeah, it could happen. Yeah. Hey, have you been out of the country? Never. And I, I like, gotta I, do I, it. It's one of those things where I, I'm not a big, I don't like to travel, honestly. Like as far as, and like by car, by, I don't mind flying a boat. I'm not getting on. Forget that. No boat? No. Like my wife wants to go, she keeps talking about how she wants to go on a cruise and stuff, but this is before this crap started. So right, now right. she'll probably be, she probably won't want to do it after, you know, once this gets back to normal. But she, I was like, I'm not doing, I'm not doing a cruise. I'm terrified of the ocean. Not like to where if I'm by the ocean, I'll panic, but it's just, it's not my thing. I mean, it is kind of weird. Like, I've been on a cruise, and then you're in the middle of the ocean, and this massive thing is floating, and it's got thousands of people on it, and then you, like, you, like, look out, and you don't see anything else. Like, you realize it's kind of, like, if you really think about it, it's nerve-wracking. In the same way, like, when you're flying, Mm -hmm. like, this tube is in the air. (laughs) And if you really think about it, like, we're all in the air, like thousands and thousands of feet above the ground, and something could go wrong. Like, so I just prefer not to think about it. Really, is what it oh, is. Oh yeah, same here. But like, the funny thing about it is, people have been on cruise. Like, I've had the conversation. Their 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 thing to me is always, oh, once you're on there, the you know, there's so much stuff to do. You don't even know you're on a boat. I was like, yes, the hell, I will know <laughs> because I can't just. It's one thing, like, hey, if it's just you know, you go on the thing and to go on the boat, the ship, and it's just docked at the you know just sitting there i can just walk right back off like okay i did everything i want to do and i can walk right yeah. off and go home i can't do that i can't just jump in the ocean like okay can't get like, off yeah no. you are stuck there <laughs> and every like everybody that i've talked to they say the same thing like you won't even know i'm like i know exactly where i'm at i paid for this i have felt the boat before like if you're in bad weather you feel the boat and you yes yeah, i don't i don't need to be doing that 
And then as far as like going swimming in the ocean and all that, I'm just, no. And my, well, my thing with it is too, what it might sound kind of messed up. It's just like you go swimming in the ocean, say somebody gets attacked by a shark. And then, especially back in the day where people get attacked, and then they go and hunt these sharks and kill all these sharks. I'm like, you're, you're going into their house. Yeah. That's like somebody going into your house and just sitting on the couch, kicking their feet up, making all a bunch of making a bunch of damn noise. Yeah. And it's like, oh, hey, how are you doing? That's, that's not how it works. You don't just you can't do right? that. You're in their domain. What else are they gonna do? <laughs> yeah. and, and it's not like they can just talk to you like, hey, can you please? Uh, you know, I'm hungry. Can you please move or get out of my way? Like, <laughs> you're in. No, they they don't do that. They just yeah bite <clears throat> yeah and people will say oh it's real rare to get bit by a shark well it's even rare to get bit by a shark when you're on land so i'll stay on land yeah that, that would be yet. quite a feat for that shark i mean but sharknado has taught us that uh, you can be anywhere and shark, shark could attack you did you watch those movies i've seen three of them i there's i think five of them right I think there's like seven. I know there's one in space now. Uh, I have not seen the space one yet. <laughs> My I, mom loves those movies, though. Really? See, those movies aren't for everybody. I, I will say that. Cause I watched one and a half of them, and I just couldn't do it anymore. I was like, oh, my goodness. It's, it's definitely like suspension of disbelief. It's very silly. It's very oh, fun, yeah. you know. So when I kind of go in with that idea, then I can have a good time. And I don't get me wrong. I love my silly shark. I love shark movies, good or bad. But that one was just one I couldn't connect with. I <laughs> tried my best. I do want to see yeah. the one in space just because. Yeah, why not? It's, it was rough. Like, if they did it shark hurricane, you know, sharks in a hurricane, that'd make more sense. <laughs> I'd probably enjoy that one more. But Sharknado just... Shark cane. There we go. We yeah, should uh, make that one. <laughs> it makes so much more sense. You know, there's a hurricane, there's sharks, water. Yes, that works. And it could still be cheesy. It has to be cheesy with a name like that. Totally. Totally. But hey, they tried. They did the, you know, people do enjoy it though. It has, oh, yeah. it has those fan bases. You said your mom likes it. Definitely fun. Yeah, I will say. I, I do enjoy them just because it's so silly. Would you want to be in a Sharknado movie? Oh, totally. <laughs> I want to die by a shark that, hey. in a movie. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, in a movie. I've died like, I think it's like 10 times on camera, and I have not yet died by sharks, so. Got to get that off your bucket list. Got to get that one, yeah. That's awesome, though. Do you, now, as far as acting, do you mind dying? Like, Are you one of those people who or you just don't really care either way? I mean, I don't mind dying. It's like, you know, it, it, was, it was like, the hardest part of dying is the holding your breath after you've died and you're, they're trying to get that shot and I'm trying not to breathe. So my tummy doesn't move up and down, you know, <laughs> that, that's the hardest part. Uh, but as far as like the physical, like, like all that's, it's just fun. It's just pretend it's really, it's just fun. Yeah. No, that's cool though. Would you ever want to be a the villain or the villain, a villain? I, I kind of play the villain in the after party. I'm not a, a likable character at all. Um, I, but I've never played, like, yet. I have not yet played, like, the, the killer. killer. Okay. So I, I think that that would be super fun to do. Okay, nice. See, that, that's a role I would, I would like to see you in, is being the killer. Because it's, it's cool when you see a female as a killer, especially when you don't find out until like, later. And they're like, holy crap, she's the one doing this the whole yeah. time? Yeah, and that's a lot of those Lifetime movies. A lot of those are female killers. Oh, my goodness. Those suburb women are nuts. Yeah, <laughs> never trust a bunch of suburb women. <laughs> they, they start drinking at like 10 o'clock in the morning. Right there, you should be like, all right, there's something bad's going to happen. They are, it's, it's like they're in quarantine. That's what it is. I know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> all that early drinking. I've done early drinking before. I wasn't in quarantine. <laughs> You know. I'll do it if I'm in Vegas or something. Day drinking? Or like um, if I go to brunch. Mm -hmm. But Same once thing. I start day drinking, it's like time becomes weird. Then I always take a nap and then I wake up and I'm like really confused. Is it the same day? Is it the next day? Like I do get knocked out when I day drink. Hey, but some, you know, I guess according to those Lifetime movies, sometimes you just got to do it. I don't know why. <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> But it, it, it going back though, it's funny how like not all of them, but there's a lot of them. They drink a lot. I'm like, damn. 
and it's always wine. Do these women? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a big wino, so I I totally support the wine habit. <laughs> See, I, I'm not a big wine person. I don't mind it. It has to be sweet. Mm. I don't like the bitter wines at all. Mm. And then it has to be like a certain sweetness to it, or I just won't. You won't. Yeah. I, won't really with it. If I, I mean, yeah. if I buy it, I'll finish it. I'm not going to enjoy it, but I will finish it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> me, it's more of a dark liquor. Yeah. If any. Well, not if anything. That's that's my number one. Yeah. Number one drink of choice. <laughs> and then I tried uh, these beers just because semi horror related, like this. Oh, hang on. I may have to show you it after. Oh, punk something lemonade. Ooh. Punk lemonade. That um, looks fun. It's good. This one is called Zombie Killer. Zombie Killer. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's cool. I'm one of those guys. I'm man enough to admit I like the girly drinks. <laughs> uh oh. Yes. Is a glitch? Uh oh. Give me like two seconds. There we go. You know what? Just moving around. <laughs> I'll learn this thing. I'll get <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> there you go. I don't even know why I did all that. I didn't even move it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. All of a sudden, it just started flickering. Do you have a ghost? Maybe. You're in the <laughs> attic. Yeah. So. I do. If that's, <laughs> that's the worst it's going to do, I'm fine. I wish yeah. I cut it out, do something different, like clean this attic up for me, but <laughs> <clears throat> oh man, a ghost. I don't Crazy. want to go with something like that. Maybe but they're friendly. Hopefully. <laughs> Not from the movies I watched, so right. <laughs> the only friendly ghost movie I watched was Casper. Other than that, all <laughs> maybe hurt. it's Casper. <laughs> nice. But his uncles were jerks. They were funny though. They were yeah. harmful. They were just funny. I could deal with that. <laughs> but all that other stuff, no, I'm leaving. <laughs> I just I'm out here. It's yeah, too yeah, much. So. <laughs> My wife said if I was possessed, she would kick me out. So like, I wouldn't even try to. Nope, you got to go. You're like you're out of here. She'll find a a different home or something. <laughs> I respect that. I would, like, hey, you know what? It, it would be a lot to try to, you know, have a what's it called. The, when you, se the seance, the seance or, um, when you have to have to have the pre oh an exorcism oh yeah that exorcism. like that's a lot that's a lot of commitment right there it is that is too and then i feel those people who mess with the ouija boards i don't know if they're real or not but it's not something i'm gonna find i don't want to find that out i know right <laughs> like i have i have my beliefs i i'm the type of person I'm like this isn't real this isn't real but at the same time like i'm not no i'm not mm -mm not going in there. I'm like, yeah, someone just got murdered in this house. Every time someone goes, the fifth person that gets in this house gets murdered and just die. You want to go in and check it out? No. You're like, no. <laughs> Why would I? But you, you know what's funny too? People that know that I'm a horror fan so then they figure out that these places are really haunted. Aaron, you should go check this out. I'm like, listen, I like these make-believe movies. I didn't say nothing about these going to these asylums right. where they're haunted and, <laughs> and things can attach to you and you bring it home and, you know, something happens to you. No, it's it's not the same. Like I thought you liked yeah. horror. I love horror, but this is different. That, that's real life. Yeah, that's like I like that's like you know I like these Lifetime movies where people are getting drunk and killing. Each other. No, I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to watch yeah. TV. Exactly. <laughs> or the gangster movies where you see all these drive, you know, all the crazy stuff happen. No, I love the movies, but I don't want to. No, yeah, I don't want to part I'm of. Not going to participate. You know. <laughs> Yeah, have me. Yeah. Gonna have me out here crying in front of everybody, <laughs> scared. This this was a good time. This was fun. Yeah, this was great. Thank you so much for uh, for reaching out, and I'm glad that we were able to get a, a good chat in. Same here. I I want to get you on again, and with one of those movies, I'll try to send you some more too. I'd like to get you on to do a movie review, a horror movie okay. review, but with one of the movies that. I'll try to send you another list of, or a list of something. Yeah, yeah. Something. That'd be fun. And, and definitely check out Death Day, and I'd love to hear what you think about it. Oh, I'm gonna. I have it saved on my wish list. or my, I keep saying a wish list. <laughs> my watch list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna check it out soon, and I will 
get one of my people on here with me to do a podcast on it as well. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you thought about it. Definitely. Yeah, we'll definitely check it out. We'll definitely do that. Cool. Thank you so much. Oh, anytime. Anytime. So nice to meet you and and e-meet you and all that. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. Definitely fun. And again, if you ever want to come on here again to review a movie or to promote any of your other horror projects, feel free. Just reach out, shoot me an email. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Okay, cool. Thank you. If there's anything you want to plug, you can go right ahead and plug. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's see. So, Human Zoo comes out on May 5th on iTunes. Uh, Death Days on Amazon. Uh, Bed with the Killers on Amazon. And I have another horror short that's doing the festival circus circuit called Wrightwood. And so hopefully that will become a feature sometime in the near future. Awesome. You said Death Day is also on Tubi, correct? And Tubi, right. Yes. Perfect. And you can get a DVD of it at Walmart. How do we get that DVD signed? Uh, somehow, I guess you could e- mail it to me. <laughs> okay. Um, shoot me an email and we'll figure out how to get it signed. Perfect. Because that's, yeah. that's something like I try to do when I do get indie movies. Is Well, usually when I get to buy them in person from cons, I always try to get them signed. Yeah. And for some, to me, it's some strange reason. They look at me like, you really want me to sign this? I'm like, you, you were a part of this, of course. Why not? Yeah. Cause I'm the, I, I say it now. I'm like, I'm the type of person, if I'm in a movie, I don't care if I'm in the movie for two seconds and I have a stack of DVDs that I'm in, I'm signing every single one before yeah. they leave. You, you, I don't care if you want my autograph or you, know, you were in the movie for two. I don't care. <laughs> it's, I mean, walk. you got to be proud of it, you know? Yeah. And I, I just think it's awesome. I think it's just an awesome thing too. I think I don't think that they were not proud of it. I think it was just more of a surprise. Yeah, but totally. For me, I'm just like I think it's just awesome. I don't care if you're in the movie for two seconds or the whole movie or whatever. It's still awesome that you got to be a part of this. Yeah, picture. and you're a part of that world and that story. Like that's cool. Yeah, I know that Jonathan when he came out here in November, he brought his copy and I signed his death day copy. See, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, last question before. We go, excuse me. How does that feel when people ask for your autograph for you? It was really cool. I, I took pictures of it. I was like, of course I'll sign this DVD. <laughs> That's cool. And, uh, you know, there's lots of, this is a tough industry I'm in. Being an actor is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's one of those moments where I'm like, okay, I'm going the right direction. I'm getting opportunity. Like, I can see my career getting bigger and that makes me really happy. That's good. That's good. Well, I wish you the best of luck in everything you do. Thank you so much. You too. I can't wait to see all of your 40 quarantine episodes or whatever. Yeah. I got a lot more to do. I have a lot more to edit and all that, which, you know, it it comes with it, but it's fun. Yeah. And I can't wait to, like I said, I can't wait to do this again. Yeah. For the rest of your day, I would tell you Thank to stay you. warm, but that's really going to be easy for you. <laughs> I'm going to go sit on the balcony, I think. <laughs> and uh, have a, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. And stay safe, okay? Stay healthy. I will try. <laughs> My best. Bye. Bye. <laughs>